Aesop Fables, Volume One. The Rooster and the Fox. One bright evening, as the sun was sinking on a glorious world, a wise old rooster flew into a tree to roost. Before he composed himself to rest, he flapped his wings three times and crowed loudly. But just as he was about to put his head under his wing. His beady eyes caught a flash of red and a glimpse of a long, pointed nose, and there, just below him, stood Master Fox. Have you heard the wonderful news? cried the fox in a very joyful and excited manner. What news? asked the rooster very calmly, but he had a queer, fluttery feeling inside him, for you know he was very much afraid of the fox. Your family and mine and all other animals have agreed to forget their differences and live in peace and friendship from now on forever. Just think of it. I simply cannot wait to embrace you. Do come down, dear friend, and let us celebrate the joyful event. How grand! Said the rooster. I certainly am delighted at the news. But he spoke in an absent way, and stretching up on tiptoes, seemed to be looking at something afar off. What is it you see? Asked the fox a little anxiously. <coughs> Why, it looks to me like a couple of dogs coming this way. They must have heard the good news, and but the fox did not wait to hear more. Off he started on a run. Wait! Cried the rooster. Why do you run? The dogs are friends of yours now.、Uh, yes, answered the fox. But they might not have heard the news. Besides, I have a very important errand that I had almost forgotten about. The rooster smiled as he buried his head in his feathers and went to sleep, for he had succeeded in outwitting a very crafty enemy. <laughs> Moral: The trickster is easily tricked. The Wolf and the Kid. There was once a little kid whose growing horns made him think he was a grown-up billy goat and able to take care of himself. So one evening, when the flock started home from the pasture and his mother called, the kid paid no heed and kept right on nibbling the tender grass. A little later, when he lifted his head, the flock was gone. He was all alone. The sun was sinking. Long shadows came creeping over the ground. A chilly little wind came creeping with them, making scary noises in the grass. The kid shivered as he thought of the terrible wolf. Then he started wildly over the field, bleeding for his mother. But not halfway, near a clump of trees, there was the wolf. The kid knew there was little hope for him. Please, Mister Wolf, he said, trembling. I know you're going to eat me, but first, please pipe me a tune, for I want to dance and be merry as long as I can. The wolf liked the idea of a little music before eating, so he struck up a merry tune, and the kid leaped and frisked gaily. Meanwhile, the flock was moving slowly homeward. In the still evening air, the wolf's piping carried far. The shepherd dogs pricked up their ears. They recognized the song the wolf sings before a feast, and in a moment they were racing back to the pasture. The wolf's song ended suddenly, and as he ran with the dogs at his heels, he called himself a fool for turning piper to please a kid when he should have stuck to his butcher's trade. Moral. Do not let anything turn you from your purpose. The sheep and the pig. One day, a shepherd discovered a fat pig in the meadow where his sheep were pastured. He very quickly captured the porker, which squealed at the top of its voice the moment the shepherd laid his hands on it. You would have thought, to hear the loud squealing, that the pig was being cruelly hurt. But in spite of its squeals and struggles to escape, the shepherd tucked his prize under his arm and started off to the butcher's in the marketplace.
The sheep in the pasture were much astonished and amused at the pig's behavior, and followed the shepherd and his charge to the pasture gate. What makes you squeal like that? asked one of the sheep. The shepherd often catches and carries off one of us, but we should feel very much ashamed to make such a terrible fuss about it like you do. That is all very well, replied the pig with a squeal and a frantic kick. When he catches you, he is only after your wool, but he wants my bacon. Moral. It is easy to be brave when there is no danger. The Donkey and the Load of Salt A merchant, driving his donkey homeward from the seashore with a heavy load of salt, came to a river crossed by a shallow ford. They had crossed this river many times before without accident, but this time the donkey slipped and fell when halfway over. And when the merchant at last got him to his feet, much of the salt had melted away. Delighted to find how much lighter his burden had become, the donkey finished the journey very gaily. Next day, the merchant went for another load of salt. On the way home, the donkey, remembering what had happened at the ford, purposely let himself fall into the water and again got rid of most of his burden. The angry merchant immediately turned about and drove the donkey back to the seashore, where he loaded him with two great baskets of sponges. At the ford, the donkey again tumbled over, but when he had scrambled to his feet, it was a very disconsolate donkey that dragged himself homeward under a load ten times heavier than before. <coughs> Moral The same measures will not suit all circumstances. The Peacock The Peacock, they say, did not at first have the beautiful feathers in which he now takes so much pride. The Roman goddess Juno whose favorite he was, granted them to him one day when he begged her for a train of feathers to distinguish him from the other birds. Then, decked in his finery, gleaming with emerald, gold, purple, and azure, he strutted proudly among the birds. All regarded him with envy. Even the most beautiful pheasant could see that his beauty was surpassed by the peacock. Presently, the peacock saw an eagle soaring high up in the blue sky and felt a desire to fly, as he had been accustomed to do so. Lifting his wings, he tried to rise from the ground. But the weight of his magnificent train held him down. Instead of flying up to greet the first rays of the morning sun or to bathe in the rosy light among the floating clouds at sunset, he would have to walk the ground more encumbered and oppressed than any common barnyard fowl. Moral Do not sacrifice your freedom for the sake of pomp and show. <laughs>